Hey, what's going on? It's Mike T. Nelson here, doing some Professor Whiteboard series here, and we're in the Extreme Human Performance Center. So, a little shot there. Got some tires, all sorts of fun stuff, some big ropes, tire sleds, all sorts of, all the really cool stuff. So, today's lesson is going to be something that you definitely want to understand. It's going to be what's called the said principle versus transfer. So this is something unfortunately I didn't learn until eh, took a lot of classes but it was never really mentioned. It's mentioned once and then never mentioned again. So the said principle, for most of you probably already know, is an acronym. So it stands for specific adaptation to impose demand. Or you take the definition that Dr. Kaj from Z Health uses is um, he likes the terms always and exactly, which is pretty good. So your body will always adapt to exactly what you do. So if I want to get better at, say, doing a bench press, the said principle would dictate that I have to bench press. Seems pretty simple. So if we take that one more layer, so if I want to get better at a bench press in, let's say, eventually doing it in a competition. So in a competition, you would actually have to pause with the bar of your chest and then back up. So if I want to get good at that, my practice then Ideally, I would want to mirror that, so I would practice with the pause, the chest, and back up. So the set principle, your body will always adapt to exactly what you do. So if you're training a sprinter, you runs 100 meters, you would want to have them run 100 meters. So, so the next question then is, well, I know someone who said that to get increased my deadlift, uh, they told me then, to do squats. Well, how, how does that work? That's not really specific at all. They're different exercises. So this gets in the question of what is transfer? So transfer can be either what we'll say is positive or negative. And so that means when I do one exercise, if it's a positive transfer, it means I got better. So let's take the example of I want to do, let's say, uh, squats to increase my deadlift, right? So we know a squat is not specific to a deadlift, right? If you want to get better at doing squats via the said principle, you'd have to go do squats. But via transfer, if I get better at doing squats and my deadlift goes up, that's actually a positive transfer. Okay, so that's what most of the time what we're going to be looking for. I'm going to do, for example, an accessory exercise. So I'm going to do for a bench, let's say, a foreboard press. I want to do that to increase my bench press. If that happens, that's a positive transfer. So I did something that was similar wasn't exactly specific, and I got better at a different exercise. So that's pretty cool. So how does this work in your training? So what I usually have people do first is, <coughs> let's say they want to get better at their bench press, I would have them initially, <coughs> obviously work on bench press. And at some point, they probably can't do any more specific bench press work. So then, you would look at an exercise that's probably common. So let's say, you know, foreboard press, neutral press, axle press, something like that. So then what we're looking for is positive transfer. So I did a foreboard press or whatever common exercise and in this case my bench press went up. So we're looking for something to positively transfer to what we want to do. So 
you see this happen all the time with sports, right? So someone says, all right, squats will make you a better football player. Maybe. Squatting isn't really exactly specific to football, but if a squat made them a better football player, we know that we had positive transfer. Now trying to figure out if you're a better football player or not, kind of fuzzy, but if a, your squat went up and you actually got worse, that'd be negative transfer. So classic example is maybe you made the athlete squat a lot heavier weight but maybe they're a 100 meter sprinter. Maybe their sprint time actually went down. So yep, we made them squat more, but their goal, so in this case their 100 meter sprinter, actually got worse. So in that case, there is a negative transfer to what you were doing. So two takeaways. So the set principle, so you know, a specific adaptation to impose demand, body will always adapt to exactly what you are doing. Sort of the corollary to that is transfer. So I did something that was not specific. For example, I'm gonna do squats to increase my deadlift. And if that happens, it's a positive transfer. If I did something and I got worse at what my goal was, that's a negative transfer. So when you're setting up your training, the first thing I always work on is what is specific to your goals. So if you wanna increase your bench press, Probably want to bench press first. If not, or you have maxed that out, you would then go to common. With the common, we want to look for something that will have the most positive transfer. So I think it's maybe a foreboard press, incline press, dumbbell press, whatever. So I'll set up my little experiment. I will do that also. And then later, I'll come back and measure, in this example, my bench press. If my bench press went up, I know I have positive transfer, and my bench press is better. So that's a little whiteboard lesson today for a set principle versus transfer. I'm Mike T. Nelson for ExtremeHumanPerformance.com. So go there and find a free gift for you. So check it out.